guys um, welcome to this video on transformation of independent variable and by the independent variable I mean the x-axis um, there are three possible uh, possibilities to transform the independent variable one is the time shifting another is the time reversal and the last one is time scaling uh, in this video I'm going to cover this uh, time scaling one so let's try to understand time shifting uh, using an example and Let's just say I have a single x of n, which I can plot something like this. So at 0, I have an amplitude of 3. At 1, I have a sample of amplitude 2. At 2, I have a sample of amplitude 1. And I'm asked to plot x of n minus 2. Now, let me define something here. Let me call this thing as an old signal and that one as a new one that we are asked to draw from the old one. Now, as this topic is of um, transformation and independent and variable, so the independent and variable is n here and n here as well. Now, because this is the old one and we want to use that to make the new one, which is x n minus 2, I'm going to use a small o to show that this is the old n. And I'm going to use a small n here to show that this is a new n. So, uh, to move from old to new, what I do is, I just say that old n is equal to the new n minus 2. And therefore, the new n is the old one plus 2. Uh, so now, if I make this table of the old and the new ones, now if old is, if n old is 0, if that is 0, then n new is going to be 0 plus 2, which is 2. Now if n old is, if n old is 1, if n old is 1, we'll have 1 here and 2 there, so that becomes add up to 3, so n new has to be 3. And if n old is 2, n new is going to be 4. Now, if we look at this one, we understand that whatever sample we have at n old equal to 0 is going to be moved to n to 2. And the sample that is standing at n equal to 1 is going to move to n equal to 3. And the sample that is standing at n equal to 2 is going to move to n equal to 4. So if I draw the resultant graph, that old sample which was on 0 is going to the new n which is 2. So that 0 sample which is of height 3 is going to get into the uh, position of n equal to 2. So we'll have this one at 2. And the first sample at n equal to 1 in the old signal, in the old one, is going to move to the n equal to 3. So at 3 we'll have the amplitude of height 2. And at similarly at this 2 1 is going to move to 4. So that is x of n minus 2. So um, because that small 0 is not really part of the question and small and it's not really a part question so I'm going to rub them oh sorry I'm going to rub them so so that's my answer so that's my x of n minus 2 um, similarly if I'm asked to plot x of um, n plus 3 and if I follow the same steps I'll end up with Um, I'm going to end up with uh, um, that is going to move to so let's rather let's just do it now so it's going to be new one so that's the old one so n old is equal to n new plus three and therefore n new is sorry n new is n old minus three so if n old is zero the n new is going to be that n old is zero the n new is going to be n old minus three so zero minus three is minus three 
So the sample that is running on the zero is going to be on the minus three now. So sample on the zero initially was three, so it's going to be on the minus three now. And the end old which was initially at one is going to be one minus three, which is uh, minus two. So this is minus two, and then similarly this is minus one. So we call this thing as x of n plus 3. Now let me take this small n out because it's not really part of question. We use it as a key. Now let's try to devise some rules to plot x of n minus 2 and x of n plus 3 uh, directly rather than using this process because it's really tedious to do it all the time. Um, so the rule is that if I'm given x of n and I'm asked to plot x of n minus 2, that negative sign says that I have to move x of n to the right. So it says, the negative sign says, negative sign suggests, or rather say that move x of n to right. By how much? By that many samples. By two samples and similarly um, the x of n plus 3 we have plus over here that plus suggests that we have to move this x of n to the left side so the plus suggests so positive sign says that move x of n to uh, left by how much by three samples by three samples. So the key is if you see a negative sign you move this signal to the left sorry to the, to the right and if you see a positive sign here then you move the signal to the uh, left. So negative move this thing to the right and the positive move this x of n to the left. And by how much you just have to see uh, a number standing next to the negative and the positive sign. So let's do another example here. Um, and let me say that this time around I have x of t which is given by this thing. So this is my x of t. And I'm asked to plot x of t minus, let's just say, um, 4. Now we have a negative sign here, which suggests that we must move this x of t to the right side. And by how much? By 4 seconds. I'm saying seconds here because we're dealing with continuous time. And in continuous time, this t is in seconds. So if I plot x of t minus 4, I have to move this signal to the right by 4 seconds. So that origin or that point which was at initially at 0 second is going to be at 4 seconds. And that point which was at 1 is going to be at 5th second. So we have this thing over here. And that point which was at minus 1 when moved by 4 on the right is going to be on the minus three, oh sorry, uh, three, and that is going to be at the two. So we'll have a plot something like this. So that's the plot of x of t minus four. So what we have done is we have shifted x of t to the right by four seconds. Why right? Because we have a negative sign over here. Now similarly if I'm asked to plot x of t plus let's say uh, 0.5 then I have to move this x of t to the left side because we have positive sign here. So we have to shift x of t to left by 0.5 seconds. Let's see how the plot looks like. So I'm asked to 
of x of p plus 0.5. So which means that I have to move this one to the left by 0.5. So that point which was at 1 is going to be moved by 0.5 to the left and will be centered, will be at now 0.5. So we'll have something like this. So that point which was initially at 1 seconds is not going to be now at 0.5 seconds. And uh, the rest just follows. Oh, sorry. So that is going to be 0.5 negative, and that point is going to be uh, 1.5 negative, and that is going to be negative 2.5. Now, there are two terms which are usually used for signal slider. And the term that we use for this, this signal or this kind of signal is, is a, a delayed version of x of t. And the signal for us, and the term that is used for a signal like this is advanced version of x of t. Now, why I'm calling this signal as a delayed version of x of t now? It is called delayed version of x of t because here, if you observe, that the signal is going to start at minus 2. Whereas now, the signal is delayed by 4 seconds and now starts at 2. So we have a delay of 4 seconds for signal to start. Whereas in this case, the signal starts rather early as compared to the signal over here. Here the signal starts at 2, whereas the signal here starts early at negative 2.5. So we have an advance of 0.5. That is why we call this thing advanced version of x of t, and that one is called a delayed version of x of t. Um, the rest of the two transformations, uh, namely the time reversal and scaling, are going to be covered in the next videos. So if you have any questions or comments, just leave them in the comment section below. And yes, thank you for listening.